This is Ye Ye, an 80-year-old farmer who lives in the tiny village of Shiyangping in central China's Hunan province. He is a man of simple pleasures and loves nothing more than tending to his farm, rustling up a feast for his ever-evolving set of guests, and bumbling around his charming village to check out the view and gossip with his mates. He was kind enough to welcome us into his home and was all too happy to be the star of his own show. And so it is our pleasure to give you a look at a day in his life. Yeye's day begins at the crack of dawn. Although I reckon in all his years, he's probably never had any need for an alarm clock. Breakfast is a simple affair, consisting of rice, potatoes, and the meat left over from last night's meal. Ever the gracious host, Yeye checks that the food is up to scratch for us. We are joined by two local craftsmen that are currently building an extension to Yeye's home. As the village has the highest level of protected heritage status, all the buildings must be built in the traditional Tuja style, using local wood. We'll take you for a proper explore of Yeye's wonderful house a little later. Don't worry, nobody's going hungry on this farm. And Yeye was even kind enough to prepare a terrifying bucket of slop for his pigs. Pigs are meant to be pretty intelligent, but I'm not sure they pay much attention to him. <laughs> Whilst they tuck in, it's time for a bit of housekeeping. <laughs> After tending to his other animals, Ye Ye disappears into a shed and comes back with a book commemorating the region's first Olympic athlete, which he insists we put in the film. After barking some instructions to his tradesman, Ye Ye grabs his basket and beckons for us to follow him to his garden. With the melon safely stowed in his basket, he marches out of his house. Your guess is as good as mine where he is off to next. By the way, in case you're wondering, Ye Ye means grandpa in Chinese. His full name is Chuan Zhou Ping, but as one of the village's elder statesmen, everybody affectionately knows him as Ye Ye. Hero! Hero! After presenting his lady friend with another melon for her collection, Ye Ye continues his morning rounds of the village. Next up, we stop for a chat with a couple more of his mates. The locals here speak a dialect that is totally incomprehensible to outsiders. One thing we did understand was Yeye's friend's utter disbelief that a bearded fellow such as Jack could be a mere 27 years old. Yeah, <laughs> 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 
After saying goodbye to his friends and checking out a traditional bath, we carry on our stroll through the village's rice paddies. Yeya seems in his element, guiding us through the neatly maintained fields and pointing out traditional farmhouses along the way. The local farmers are busy with the autumn harvest, which explains the gentle hum of farm machinery. At the far end of the village lies a bar where Yeye likes to come to play mahjong with his mates. But sadly for him, I think they are all too busy harvesting their crops today. Never mind though, I am sure he's got plenty more chores to be getting on with. After all that walking, I think it's time for lunch. Okay. First, he chops some wood for the stove, gets a fire going, then cleans out his wok. The villagers eat a fresh but tasty diet, consisting of various local grown vegetables, rice, tofu, and on special occasions, meat. Don't worry, yeah, yeah. I think we'll manage. Yeah, yeah doesn't add much to his dishes, save for a pinch of salt or a splash of soy. After cooking, he leaves the dishes to cool under a fly net, which doubles as his fridge for leftovers too. I think everyone is pretty hungry. Us included. Oh, and don't forget the piggies. Once everyone is fed, the village goes quiet as the inhabitants sleep off their lunch. We are awoken by the familiar sound of building work and peer out of our room to see Yeye inspecting the beautiful timber he has earmarked for his grand construction project. With a spring in his step, Yeya hits the trail once more and leads us up the hillside to his own plot of land. Wow! This is not big. It looks like incredibly physical work. Not that Ye Ye seems to mind as he crouches down and gets stuck in with the vigour of a man half his age. We did offer to help, but he was having none of it. What about me? Judging by all the treats these pigs are getting, I reckon they must be off to market soon. Lucky for us though, they are not on the menu tonight. And Ye Ye begins prepping dinner by washing his freshly unearthed potatoes. We are then treated to an insane show of Yeye's physical prowess. What about you? Oh. What? You're playing now. What is he doing? What? Hey. Oh, I don't know. Me or him? Me or him? What do you know? What do you know? I think Ye Ye is a bit worried that keeping up with him has knackered us out. So we will take this opportunity to show you around his house. 
Yaya's house has an amazing sloping roof to keep out the summer rain and lots of beautifully carved wooden details throughout. The various red decorations symbolize good fortune and bring a splash of color. Although his home is pretty practical too. Like all the houses in the village, it has a large front porch, which is used to dry out the farmer's produce. Overlooking the porch is a shrine, complete with ever smoldering incense that Yeye lays in tribute to both his ancestors and icons alike. Yeye was kind enough to let us stay in the guest wing of the house, which has excellent views of the surrounding landscape. As is the case in much of rural China, the rest of the house has a simple concrete interior, which is perfect for muddy boots and furry intruders. Anyway, I think it's time for dinner. Once again, it's a simple affair, but after a pretty energetic day, we certainly aren't complaining. What are we going to call you? Yeah, yeah, likes to round off his evenings by retreating to his den and catching up on the day's news. Bless him. I think he's fallen asleep. So let's leave him be.